This is the eSports exclusive presented by DX Racer. Hello friends, Eric and Mathos here to give you the latest and greatest in eSports and the trade window is officially open now for Overwatch. And there's a couple of teams that need to make some moves. Yeah, uh, starting off with Dallas. They've already decided to make a move. They've signed AKM. They definitely need it because they're like one in five right now and it's not going to get any better without some changes on their team. Obviously, you know, it'd be nice to give Florida a break. Six guys doesn't seem really smart for a 40 game season. And uh, if the Shanghai Dragons can get past their political corruptness behind the scenes, perhaps they'll actually sign a team that can function on some sort of basic level. And although the Korean teams are losing to teams like Boston and Philly, they don't necessarily think that they need to lose any players, gain any players right now, unless they just want to, you know, buy more talent and let them ride pine for a while. Otherwise, you know, we're talking about a really solid season shaping up for next week's mini bracket finals. Thanks to those upsets last week, we have a real chance for some kind of contentious third place or second place finish. It should be pretty cool. And uh, the new patch coming out. It's live now, but obviously that's not going to affect anything and still, until stage two. So don't get too excited. No, but uh, Mercy is dead. Everybody's <laughs> been tweeting that out. I mean, I mean everybody. Talking analysts, teams, players. Nobody wanted to play that character. It actually depressed people. And now all those Lucio mains you hired back in September pre-patch can finally get their hands wet. Uh, welcome back our speed boostio booping machines to the forefront of the Overwatch support system. It should be pretty sweet for stage two though. So keep that in mind. You gotta wait another couple weeks. Yeah, that'll be a nice and welcome change heading into that second stage. Just see no some doubt. different gameplay in a lot of these games. Uh, let's jump over to CSGO, which was absolutely insane at the Boston Major. Cloud9 went on a run for the ages, the first NA team to ever win a major. Not only run for the ages, they beat every single team that actually mattered in that tournament. And if they could have played Fnatic, they would have, guaranteed, and they would have won. They beat G2, SK, and FaZe all the way to the top. Uh, Skadoodle, who never gives an interview, promised that if he won this thing, he'd give one, and lo and behold, he did, and the dude was like, practically choked up with tears. Phenomenal gameplay across the board. I mean, everybody's playing on big swings up and down. Cloud9 almost had like a nine game sweep to lose the first set and then pulled it back. Final ends in double overtime. North America, baby. Finally on top of the Counter-Strike scene. Uh, maybe they can do it for League. <laughs> no, they can't, let's be real. <laughs> I mean, Liquid's won Dota. Now Cloud9's won CSGO. Maybe in the next five years, it'll be NA's turn to uh, hoist out Summoner's Cup. Fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, probably not. Uh, Cloud9 winning that major maybe made 100 Thieves just reconsider being involved in CSGO at all. They're gone. Yeah, uh, they packed up real early. This short-term experiment started off in December with uh, what I dubbed as a rehab attempt on the former Immortals roster of uh, Henny, Lucas, KNG, FNX, so on and so forth. Those guys uh, packed it up. Here's the long and short of it all. Basically, KNG set out a homophobic tweet to his all-time internet rival, Duncan Thorin Shields, esports broadcaster of the year for 2017. And uh, 100 Thieves did not take too kindly to it, so they gave him the chop, got rid of him. As a result, they got themselves Phelps to fill in, but you know, whatever backstage nonsense occurred, 100 Thieves decided to just count their losses and get out of Dodge for the entirety of 2018. They issued a statement yesterday and it really broke, I don't know, 10 people's hearts. Most folks are just reveling in the unfortunate nature of a bunch of guys buying nitroglycerin and having a blow up in their hands. And, and a lot of this off, out of game drama didn't even end there with 100 Thieves. I mean, you got this whole ESL debacle. They're taking to Reddit to try and cover up their tracks, but that is the worst place to go to try and make amends with things. Yeah, it's been a bit of a mess. They gave themselves an exclusive deal with Facebook for all of their Dota 2 and CSGO ESL 1 tournaments and the CSGO Pro League. And obviously fans did not take too kindly to that. So popular streamers like Admiral Bulldog took to restreaming Dota TV all the tournament matches and they talked over it. Or in the case of Admiral Bulldog, played a bunch of ridiculous recorder music. Of course, ESL and Retort didn't take too kindly to it and slammed them with some DMCA's, AKA stop streaming our content and making money off of it. Little did they know, Valve were the ones that are supposed to issue those DMCA's and Valve came down on ESL1 hard. 
ESL1 then put out a Reddit AMA and had all their answers downvoted. And finally, we lead up to middle of this week where they issued a full-blown apology. They're out thanking everybody for their patience, apologizing for the DMCAs and how they've handled everything. And they hope that they can possibly get this over the big first hump and on to actually maybe streaming some tournaments, getting Facebook's broadcast service straightened up because currently it is definitely not up to snuff. Doesn't work on Chromecast, it's only 720p, but they're working on it and hopefully people will give them a little bit of breathing room after this apology. Yeah, I mean, they haven't had much time to really implement this whole setup onto Facebook. They and just jumped right off a cliff <laughs> and into streaming on Facebook. And then everyone kicked them while they were down <laughs> after falling down uh, that cliff. Uh, another team that's getting kicked while they're down now is SK Telecom uh, coming off a loss to MVP. They had no wins, no wins on the season. 0-10, got swept in five straight games, but they handed the three-time world champions their defeat. And uh, earlier in the week, you saw Faker. He got matched up with some of his SKT buddies in solo queue, and the amount of joy he got from killing them was absolutely amazing. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is some real deal cathartic cackling right there. Even if it's just for laughs, yep. you can just feel the weight coming off the man's shoulders as he dumpsters every single one of his teammates. Yeah, he's got to feel like, you know, if you guys don't start winning, I'm just going to follow you around in solo queue and completely ruin all of your games and just keep committing massacres. Got to find something that they can care about. Yeah, uh, I, I'd be starting to worry, though, if I was SKT. And uh, you know what helps when you're worrying about things and feeling a little down? Is getting your own DX Racer chair. Uh, if you use the promo code SHOTCALLERS at DXRacer.com, you can get 15% off, and you will never worry about uh, having a sore back ever again. Nah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's very comfortable. Uh, that's it from Eric and Mathos here, bringing you the latest and greatest in esports. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you guys next week. This is the eSports exclusive presented by DX Racer.